Welcome to Graphite Hub's interview series, a series dedicated to all things Graphite. Now today we're joined by Eric Desonier, founder, president and CEO of Nouveau Mon Graphite. So welcome to the series, Eric. Thank you for having me, Ari, and congrats on your platform. It's great to see some uh, Graphite fan out there. Appreciate your feedback. Talking to someone like yourself, Eric, you're very well known in the Graphite industry, and so too is Nouveau Mon Graphite. But for my audience that aren't too familiar with Nouveau Monde, would you mind just providing a brief overview of the company? Absolutely. So Nouveau Monde stands for a new world. So we started a company now 14 years ago. And initially it was to go explore the new world for this graphite that we need for the, the newly announced Gigafactory in the US. So I was just doing the math. I'm a geophysicist. My God, we'll need more graphite eventually for those uh, batteries. So let's go uh, discover. So I'm, I'm I'm located not too far from uh, Imris mine that now Northern Graphite is running, like this hill. So I said, okay, this mine is running out. So let's discover the, the next big deposit. And that's what we did in 2014, 15. We started the drilling on the Matawini mine that is now fully permitted and the construction started. So that's the, the foundation of the company, really. It's to own a, a large deposit, uh, very well located, good economics. We bought recently uh, our friend at Mason Graphite. We're developing the Lac Garrett deposit. We purchased it last year, just before announcing the deal we did with Panasonic Energy and GM. And based on that foundation, now we're transforming the product into anode material in Bicancourt, thanks to great hydroelectricity profile, great access to reagents. So great location in Bicancourt in the industrial park. So that's basically building the full vertical, but every step of that vertical is very solid to make a cost resilient structure to offer a solution for those customers in North America and Europe uh, on lithium ion batteries. So now we're pretty advanced. We've invested a few hundred million dollars in having a phase one running since 20, uh, 2018. And now we're uh, developing the phase two uh, for the Matawini mine and for the Bacon Core battery material project. So now two very advanced development stage project that we intend to start uh, intensifying construction into the next few months after after the project financing, I guess. So that's where we are. Okay. It sounds like there's quite a lot going on at Nouveau Graphite, which is exciting, but it's safe to say that the graphite market lately, it's been quite a tough time. I think we'd both admit that the last few years have been challenging. But we saw only a few weeks ago in the US the preliminary outcome of the anti-dumping duty case, which has now imposed tariffs of 93.5% on Chinese active anode material. And so now that's taken the total effective tariff up to about 160%, which is quite significant. Are you hearing anything so far what, what impact this has had on market sentiment, pricing, and conversations you've had with people in the industry? Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it was a, since a long time, we were trying to educate our customer what's happening in China. So we were uh, able to download all financial statements of the, maybe the top 10 big producer in China. And it was easy to realize these guys are just uh, selling at cost. So they sell their product at cost think, after having spent many dollars on CapEx, but they have access to very uh, cheap money out there. So they are heavily subsidized for a smaller capex so they can afford selling at cost. But for us here in the Western world where we need to play with real money, we cannot really tell our investors we'll build a project and we'll sell at cost. So for sure there was some dumping made and it's good that those international trade commission exists and there's process in place. And I believe the, the 105 percent that is now applied is okay. It's the right amount. More than that, it would have been tough for our customer to keep developing lithium ion market in the US. Less than that, there's not enough justification for, for anybody to build new project outside of China. So, so now I think it's a, it's a fair game. It's a, the, right, the right approach. Those kind of tariff will stick in time to give us the time to build those, uh, those facilities. But I would like to, to point out as well, our uh, large customer, Panasonic Energy, GM, we did the deal early 2024. And there was no tariff like that. So, so our customer need to, uh, to believe in something uh, more fundamental, which is localization of supply chain, having a diversification from China, but ju just to have a less risky supply chain overall. And also having a, a supplier that, uh, you know, 
believe in carbon neutrality and believe in the overall vision of this uh, EV tra transition is really to reduce the carbon footprint overall. So we're, we're fortunate to have customer that believe even before the tariff that it's important to build those, those projects and they became shareholder and, and, and great partners in our, our project. So now the, the strategy is really how can we be more helpful to those customers in accelerating our project as much as possible, considering that now they have a heavy tariff and it's probably something that in the next three years, at least, we'll see in the, in the U.S. So it's, it's, it's good for us, but at the same time, hopefully our cu customer keeps building more lithium-ion battery factory. So we need to balance those things the right way. Okay, so yeah, on one hand, it's quite positive for the graphite industry. But if we were to look at it on the other side, we're seeing at the moment quite a lot of tension between both the US and Canada. So how do you see this playing out and impacting Nouveaumont Graphite? Are you considering any strategic changes? There's a lot of noise around tariff, but the reality is Canada is uh, amongst all countries in the world the less impacted by tariff because we have those agreements between uh, U.S., Mexico, Canada, and all the uh, goods that are that are compliant to those uh, those agreements are exempt from tariffs. So even if there's big noise of uh, 25, 30, or whatever tariff is announced, the reality is the effective tariff rate against Canada is very low. So that's why our government is is really keen at keeping it this way. And I like to say we are the we we have best of both worlds. It means our customer mostly based in the U.S as much more advantage to to buy from a zero tariff location like Canada because we're compliant to to Kusma on one hand and on the other hand we're building our project exempt of tariff as well so we we would not like to be in the US and having this kind of uncertainty on our capex that is always changing depending where you procure your your material to build your projects and, and also, on the other hand, our government is really keen on the EV mandate still. So they are very supportive and we have a lot of, uh, of incentive to build our project coming from the federal government of Canada, but also the provincial government of Quebec. It's still very important for them to develop the EV mandate, the, B, uh, the BESS mandate as well, but also the defense mandate now. So it's becoming more and more important for our government to, to be resilient and in the face of that new reality and they want to grow the the budget for defense to 5% and 1.5% of our gdp so and 1.5% of our gdp will be directly targeting a critical mineral projects so that's like this year it was 63 billion going to defense in canada which is a small number compared to us but still the biggest in the history of canada and now this number need to grow to 150. So there's a lot of potential being in Canada, developing critical minerals, having this kind of government here. And we're still a good neighbor to those uh, big customer in the US. So so for us, it's the best best of both world now in this, uh, in this regime, yeah. Okay, now that's really positive to hear. And although this is a podcast all about graphite, I'd like just to touch on lithium for a second. So lithium tends to set the tone for the broader battery material market. And we've seen more recently that CATL has closed a lithium mine in China for at least three months. And we've already seen prices increase about 15%. So what impact do you think, if any, is this going to have on graphite? But I mean, it's the same story. Eh? So you go in China, I've been in China three times since December. It's amazing the amount of money they've put in the whole EV transition, like they sacrifice a lot of their services and a lot of their economy in hyper and industrialization in this specific market segment. So from uh, there's over 20, 30 brand of car that you don't, there's not even, a, you know, an English character on it. It's all, you don't even know what is it. It's not only BYD, uh, Xpeng and the, the Neo, all these cars that we know here, there's tons of stuff in China. It's the same for cell making it's the same for all the battery making it was overly subsidized in the last five years and now china cannot do that anymore so they have a, a high unemployment for students finishing uh, finishing school they, they sacrifice a lot of their services to their community so even catl now they cannot sustain 
operating at a loss. You know, they won't be saved by the government. So it's the same we hear in graphite. We have a lot of uh, contact in the graphite world in, in, in Asia. Uh, there's more and more suppliers in Asia that need to sell outside the, outside Asia to, 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 to survive because the government won't save them anymore. They overbuild, but they don't have the economy to keep doing that uh, very long. So what we see in lithium with CATL is the same we see in graphite, and they won't be able to continue operating at a loss. They won't build any more projects. They overbuilt there. So we see the impact being very positive overall. So And we see more graphite players to maintain their growth coming outside of China. And if they come outside China, they won't be supported as much by the government. They will need to build projects on the same ground as we have, like having real money, re real, real return, real economics to, to, to play. So we see it will increase the price overall uh, in the future. So, so, I mean, it's just a normal thing uh, to happen now, not only on the lithium side, but Everything related to EV should be more, more, more capital market standard in the future. But even with all these developments that we're seeing, which should signal that we should be seeing an increase in graphite prices, they're still under pressure. So in your view, Eric, what needs to change before we start to see a meaningful improvement in the graphite market? Well, for sure, it's not a demand issue, and there's a huge demand for graphite out there. It's more like oversupply issue uh, out of China. So they really overbuilt in the last five years, not only natural graphite, but mainly synthetic graphite. And they, they, they are running at a, at a loss, and they're kind of making synthetic graphite very cheap. What I think need to happen, it's two things, more purchasing made outside of China. So it's, it's not a China story only anymore. So more real market outside of China develop so we can make uh, more transaction with sell maker outside China for one and for two synthetic graphite price need to go back to a more normal, uh, uh, normal, uh, cost structure. So, and, and we saw the needle coke cost having a bit of a bump earlier this year, was getting excited a little, but then it stopped and they we're monitoring what's happening out there. But fundamentally to use a byproduct of the oil and gas refineries, when you're in a market in China that use less and less oil and gas, and that's, that's really what they are after. They are after reducing their consumption of, uh, of uh, gasoline. And, and, and th that starts to have a real impact on the coker, uh, on the coker in China uh, availability. So now we will see coker starting to shut down in China. Hopefully needle coke availability, needle coke cost going up because it's also a product that is used a lot in the uh, arc furnaces and in the, in the steel making industry. So fundamentally long term, we should see more natural graphite coming in the market if synthetic graphite price goes up and, you know, we need to to play in this reality where natural and synthetic graphite compete with uh, with each other a little bit. So if, uh, if synthetic graphite price goes back where they were a few years ago, that's where natural graphite price should go up. And that's, that's quite interesting. I was reading an article about uh, the, the trucking industry in China now is, is becoming more EV. I think they are at 20% penetration while uh, passenger car is over 50% uh, uh, now. So, so if, if fundamentally there's less coke curb making this needle coke available uh, that's where that's where overall pricing should go back to normal but today it's not a normal situation it's just to nobody's making money in china so that's a, that's a, an issue and now switching back to novo mond on the financing side you've recently announced over 1 billion us dollars in letters of interest for phase 2 of the project funding so now what are the key steps to now turn that interest into secured commitments yeah, so uh, capacity is there. So we have a lot of tier one uh, le uh, senior lenders who want to support us. So we announced over a billion US indeed of uh, debt capacity. Next step for us is really, uh, as we announced last year, the offtake with customers and the first investment from Panasonic Energy and GM. Now we're in discussion to, to make the, the, second, the second investment and, and structure the, uh, the offtake the right way. So that's really where we are. So we've produce a new feasibility study based on the offtake we've signed last year. Now we've delivered that feasibility study to all the lenders and all the customers and the equity investors. And now we're in the process of bringing this project to, 
to uh, to to FID to a final investment decision in the next few months, but also in a new reality where our customer are Russian time. They really want us to find alternative to accelerate the first tons to market. So that's what we were. We're trying to find some solutions for them to, to bring tons quicker than we had anticipated in the market. Uh, so the more to follow on that uh, uh, in the future and also in a reality where we cannot just keep all the flick of the mine only for two customers. There's a lot of demand on the defense application now. That's a new thing. And we have a lot of uh, requests coming from uh, our local government to, uh, to on, on different applications, not only, uh, not only lithium ion batteries. So that's something also that reshape a little bit our, our, uh, our market. Uh, so that's what you should see in the next few months, how we can, we can play this out, but the man is there to, to get, to get in construction mode much quicker. And you briefly touched on it just then, but when we talk about graphite and future demand, a lot of people think EVs and lithium ion batteries. However, looking at Nouveau Monde, are you targeting any other areas such as energy storage systems or other non-EV markets? My energy system for sure, but there's a, a lot of applications that are thermal management related like spendable graphite or or jumble flakes. We are fortunate to have a very high purity uh, concentrate right off the bat after the flotation circuit. We are average 97.5. A lot of jumbo and large flakes that are needed uh, for other applications. So, the, so, so we, we have qualified those flakes in, in those other markets now that are becoming more important. I think it's clear not only in the rare earth and in the gallium and germanium and those things it's clear that we need to have a, some sort of resiliency uh, of strategic minerals but not only for ev but and also some some other application where graphite is used a lot and finally as you progress towards production what are the key near-term catalysts that we should be keeping an eye out for nouveau monde yeah so completion of discussion with customers, maybe other customers as well, like finalizing where the uh, 106,000 ton of flake graphite will go. So that's something for the next few months and announcing all the support we get from from uh, governments. We're in talk with both sides of the border with the, with governments to see how we can get this project going as fast as possible. So there should be some announcement this fall on that. Well, no, fantastic, Eric. It sounds like there's a lot going on at Nouveau so we're looking forward to keeping up to date with your progress. But appreciate your time on here today, and we yeah look forward to having you again on, on here sometime soon. Okay, thank you very much, Harry. Have a great time in London. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of Graphite Hub's interview series. We'll see you next time.